welcome you to Journey into Faith, brought to you every week by the Bible Speaks in Laconia, New Hampshire, USA. It is so great to be with you wherever you are, in whatever country you are, that we may all praise the Lord God together. Tonight, I'll be preaching on this subject, the generation that will fulfill the promise. What is the promise? It's the promise of the Lord's return. We are in that generation according to the word of the living God. But first, I'd like to sing for you a song that is a great glory unto God because it's called the wonder of it all that Jesus should love us. There's a wonder of sunset at evening. The wonder of sunrise I see. But the wonder of wonders that thrills my soul is the wonder that God loves me. Oh, the wonder of it all, the wonder of it all, just to think that God loves me. The wonder of it all, the wonder of it all, just to think that God loves me. There's a wonder of springtime and harvest. The sky, the stars, the sun. But the wonder of wonders that thrills my soul Is the wonder that's only begun Oh, the wonder of it all The wonder of it all Just to think that God loves me. The wonder of it all, the wonder of it all, just to think that God loves me. wonder of it all just to think that God loves you and me and it is a reality the scriptures talk about it all through the word of God well right now we're going to have Gene Shoemaker sing for us a beautiful song entitled have thine own way Lord Be 
absolute sway fill with thy spirit till all shall see christ only always living in me christ only always living in you and me right now if you will stand if you're in this auditorium and my wife is going to read the word of the living god why do we stand we stand in reverence and respect for god's word like a person would stand for reverence and respect for the flag of their country so we stand in reverence and respect for god's holy word and it's taken today from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 to 58. My wife, Ellie, will be reading it. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we who are living will also be transformed. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die again. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives sin its power. But thank God he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, my brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Let's pray. Father, one day soon, maybe, Jesus is coming to get his church, get the people that love him and take them to heaven to be with him forever. Lord, we are looking forward to that day. Now we ask that you would be with our pastor as he preaches your word, as he tells us your words that you have given to him in his heart. And we thank you in your, your precious name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Ellie. Let me ask you a very serious question. You're listening around the world. You're listening here. You're listening on Public Access TV in Laconia and Concord, New Hampshire. This is the question, do you believe the Word of God? Do you believe the Word of God that has just been read to you? For you know, if you don't believe it, it will make no difference in your life. But if you do, you're going to expect Christ to come in your lifetime at any moment. And that's the way God wanted it to be. He wanted us to live in expectation. In the midst of a pessimistic world outreach and a now pessimistic world that we live in with gloom and despair and frustration, the word that Jesus gives is, I go to prepare a place for you, for you that have received me as your Savior. And if I go... To prepare a place for you, I will come again. Jesus made that promise, and he's going to come again. You may be very skeptical of that, but one day it will become a reality, and you will see he is a God of truth. Without hope in this world, we could not go on. Everything in this world seems to be going downhill, and God is saying, I'm going to rescue you from this world. It's going to get worse 
but you're not going to have to experience it. Elmo Bruna lived many years ago. He said, what oxygen is to the lungs, such is hope for the meaning of life. Without hope, people are in despair. One thing my mother said to me as she was going through the, the terrible cancer that took her life, she said, give me some hope. Give me some hope. Every one of us need hope, and the hope is in the Word of God. The hope is indeed the Word of the living God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 51, and 52 that was read to you, Behold, I show you a mystery. A mystery is something that you didn't know before. He's showing us something new in this portion of Scripture. He says, we shall not all die. The word of God says, it, it is appointed unto man once to die, then the judgment that will be changed for the generation that is raptured from this earth. We will never die if we're in that rapture. And this is the generation that he's going to do it in, says the word of God. When did that generation begin? It began when Israel became a nation again. You see, when it became a nation again, God said that's the generation in which I'm returning. And then it says, furthermore, Jerusalem will be the capital. It is and has been the capital of Israel. The word of God has declared that when the people of Israel were scattered all over the world for many generations. And yet the word of God says in that generation when they are a nation again, and certainly they are, I will come again. And I'll come for my people. In a moment it will happen in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump of God for the dead shall be raised. The dead will be raised first, but we will be caught up second, but it will be in the twinkling of an eye. We were talking about that this morning, and I can tell you that's very quick. And God says it's going to happen. Many people feel that the musical score of the Messiah was inspired by Almighty God. We hear these words that Christ is coming back. So his return is ingrained not only in the Messiah chorus, but also in the word of God in our hearts and minds. And his return is not something that's isolated in the scripture. It is spoken of 300 times at least in the word of God. He shall return. It promised he would come. He came as a baby in a manger. He grew up and he died for our sins and rose again on the third day. And he ascended into heaven. And at that time, the angel said, The same Jesus that you see taken up into heaven will come in like manner. It's going to happen, friends. C.S. Lewis, the great Oxford scholar in England, he said this, he lived in the last century, there are three reasons why people don't want to believe in the return of Jesus Christ. First, it did not take place in the early church, and they expected it would happen immediately. So they say, where is the promise of his coming? Why hasn't he come? It is not yet the time. It is the time when Israel is reconstituted as a nation, and this is that time. This is precisely what Peter predicted. He said, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days the generation in which I come, scoffers, 
walking after their own lust, wanting to live their own way. They don't want Jesus to interfere with it. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? Where is it? For since the fathers died, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they are willingly ignorant of. Can you see these people that lived in that generation saying everything is continuing as it was? They ought to see what I'm seeing as spaceships go into different planets and investigate them. They ought to see the Hubble telescope as it shows constellation after constellation. Has everything remained the same as was in their day? No, it has not in any sense. They want to be ignorant because they want Jesus not to be the son of God. They don't want him to come back. So the first reason is they want to remain ignorant of it. Don't tell me that stuff. On the internet, I will put a picture of Jesus coming and I'll get some that just deny it and say, well, he came the first time. That's not for anyone that has any intelligence to believe. And I just take them off because they're ignorant. And when a person is ignorant, it isn't on my sight at all. The second reason that people don't want to believe, according to C.S. Lewis, is that the theory of inevitability, uh, inevitable progress, excuse me, keeps them from believing. They just say the progress ha isn't there. They're willingly stupid because the progress is there. You may say you're very hard on them, Pastor. Well, of course, God calls them ignorant. I'm going to call them ignorant too. The Word of God says it has not been the same as it was. The Word of God says that he's going to return, and he is. The third reason C.S. Lewis gives us that the teachings cut across the plans and the dreams of millions of people. Many people want to eat, drink, and be merry for they don't want tomorrow to come, the tomorrow being the coming of Christ. If Christ comes back, it will interrupt what they're doing. They love sin. They love the practice of sin, and they don't want the word of God to be true because if it is, they will be judged for their sins, and so they deny that he is there. There are three New Testament Greek words used for the return of Jesus Christ. The one most frequently used means this, the coming of the king. The coming of the king. The second Greek word talks about the appearing of Jesus Christ. The appearing of him. When Christ returns, we shall see him. We're going to be caught up to be with him. But only we who are saved and caught up to be with Christ will see him at that time. The world will not see him until we come with him seven years later to set up his thousand-year kingdom. Then every eye will see him, but not in the rapture, not in the rapture at all. The third word that is in Greek used means the unveiling or the laying bare. The unveiling or the laying bare. What is hidden from our eyes now will not be hidden from our eyes then. He will appear and we will know him as he is. We sometimes wonder why all this suffering that's in the world? Why all the troubles that are going on? Where is God? Why doesn't he stop all of this evil? That will happen someday, but it is not for today. Man sinned and brought the curse on this world, and this is why we die. In, in normal ways, we will die. But I can tell you this, it won't be that way in the rapture. 
Jesus did not tell us when he's coming back. He just said, it's in this season. We're in that season. We don't know the day and hour, but we know we're in the time of Christ's return. He said there are certain signs we are to look for, and I'm going to shoot these out just like a repeating rifle because I don't have a lot of time in a half-hour broadcast. These are the things, he says, look for, and I see them even today. I see them today. First, there will be false Christ, people saying, I am the Messiah, I am God. And many of them actually draw people into their ministry and they become a god to those people. They become somebody that this false prophet says to them and they listen to him. Don't read the Bible, just listen to me. There will be false Christ. Then the scriptures teach there will be wars and rumors of wars. How many of those have you heard lately? Rumors of wars with Iran. Rumors of wars with North Korea. Rumors of wars with Russia. Rumors of world war wars. That which entails the whole world. Rumors of wars with China. They're all over the place. They're all over the place. Many years ago, a president said this, if you knew what was going on in the world, it would cause you to have great fear. And it would. What the president knows, and I'm not sure this president knows, but I know what the president knows is all the turmoil in the world, all the terrible things that could cause world war. So we do have wars and rumors of wars. Then he says there will be famines. It is such a sad thing to look into the people of Pakistan and many other areas. They're always saying, feed our children, feed our people. And they really are in need of people feeding them. There are famines all over the place. There are famines that are starting in America. There are famines that the word of God said would increase as the day comes. Then Jesus said there would be pestilences such as COVID. He didn't use the term COVID, but worldwide diseases, things that come upon us. They're talking about other diseases that will hit us during this new year. And not only the new year, but could hit us even in this year during the winter season. Pestilences. I've never heard of so many pestilences that are caused in this world today. Also, there will be an increase in earthquakes. How many times have we heard an earthquake here and an earthquake here, there, and it gets fiercer and fiercer. There will be fires, the Word of God says, and there are fires all over our globe. There will be hurricanes, hurricanes like happen in Florida and happen in many other countries. They are severe. The one that happened in San Francisco was out of the ordinary, but they are increasing tornadoes floods and the such and there will be martyrs people who are giving up their lives for their faith and it's happening in country after country after country today the word of god says christians throughout the world will be persecuted and i see it even in this country Another sign is the loss of fervent love. People don't love each other any longer. This is a unique church where people love one another, but that isn't happening in a lot of churches today. They put up with one another, but they don't love one another. Jesus said, because iniquity or sins shall uh, uh, increase and abound, the love of many shall wax cold morality as it was in the days of noah so shall it be when uh, the son of man returns morality is whatever a person says it is 
and that is not godly, a breakdown of morals and things that are unbelievable that are taking place in the world today. But it does say, and we are an example of this, in the last days the gospel shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. The results of Christ's return, and that's what I want to conclude this message with. First of all, Every single person that has ever lived and served Jesus Christ will give an account before God of their life since they believed. Not when they didn't believe, but since they believed. How do you live your life? Are you living it for Jesus Christ? There will be that judgment day. Evil will be destroyed in the days that are coming, Revelation 20. Nature will be changed so that the lion lies down with the lamb, try it today, and it won't take place. There will be safety and security as Jesus Christ comes to establish his kingdom. There will be no more war, praise God. He will deal with war. There will be a rule of Jesus Christ. There will be universal joy. You don't have to get people to smile. They'll be smiling all the time. That's the kingdom that Jesus is going to establish. One question as we close, are you prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ? Are you longing for it? Do you want the rapture to occur? And then do you want to spend your time with Jesus for seven years being married to the Lamb of God and then coming with us as his bride to this earth to establish a, a thousand years of a kingdom which is ruled by Jesus Christ, which we have the opportunity to join in that rule, and then an eternity with God? Do you really want this to take place? If you do, then you are a believer. If you do not, you need to receive Christ as your Savior Please, please don't delay. God is calling you to salvation right now if you've never received Christ. He is pleading with you, don't put this aside and mock it. Don't put it aside and say, I don't believe it. Receive it because he wants you to be saved. And if you want to be saved, then all you got to do is cry out to Jesus, forgive me of my sins, come into my life and save you, and he will save you for all eternity. All he wants in response to that is your allegiance to him and your service to the kingdom. May God bless you, and may you have a beautiful week serving God. If you have received Christ as your Savior tonight, please write us at ourhornet2 at metricast.net or write to our address in the United States of America, The Bible Speaks in Laconia, 40 Belvedere Street, Lakeport, New Hampshire, zip code 03246. Until we meet again, God bless you special.